Hey guys, in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how poor digestion can contribute to or cause prostate disease. If you're familiar with our YouTube channel, then you know we talk a lot about estrogen and its roles in the development of prostate cancer, prostate enlargement, and various types of prostate disease. So if you haven't yet already, definitely be sure to watch this video that discusses in more detail how estrogen can directly act on the prostate, enlarging the prostate, and contributing to prostate cancer cell growth. Now in the past, I've talked in depth about how everything from xenoestrogens, so the estrogen mimicking chemicals or substances in our environment, to phytoestrogens, so chemicals in our food that mimic estrogen, to stress and how hypothyroidism can all contribute to elevated levels of estrogen and therefore contribute to estrogen-driven conditions like prostate disease. However, one very important topic and a dominant cause that we have not yet discussed of estrogen dominance is gut dysfunction. So improper digestive function that leads to the leakiness the inflammation and the dysregulation of the digestive tract. Now I have mentioned in the past the importance of good liver function and how liver impairment can lead to elevated levels of estrogen because it is the liver that metabolizes and solubilizes estrogen to be excreted from the kidneys and out of the body and how the liver is responsible for converting up to 80% of the thyroid hormone into the active form and the thyroid hormone generally opposes and regulates estrogen keeping it in check. And although the liver is one of the most important organs of the digestive system, it's responsible for regulating the production of bile so you can digest your fats. It helps to neutralize stomach acid and it plays tons of very important roles in the detoxification of certain toxins that would otherwise impair the functioning and the integrity of the digestive tract. But the liver is not necessarily what I want to focus on today. Instead, I want to share with you emerging research that talks about how gut dysbiosis, which is basically an imbalance of pathogens and bacteria in the gut, particularly in the small intestine, and how that can contribute to elevated levels of estrogen and therefore prostate issues. Now I have briefly mentioned in the past how the intestines play an integral role for the proper production and synthesis of certain hormones. For example, the intestines play a key role in the proper production and synthesis of thyroid hormone. So there's a strong correlation between gut dysbiosis and hypothyroidism. However, there is emerging research that focuses on a specific group of microbes in the gut known as estrobolums, which are responsible for the synthesis and metabolization of estrogen. And in fact, the research goes on to show that gut dysbiosis, so having a bacterial imbalance in the small intestine, something like SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, can interfere with the functioning of these estrobolomes and therefore lead to estrogen issues. According to the research, the estrobolomes, which are a collection of pathogens in the gut, are actually majorly responsible for affecting the excretion of estrogen in the body as well as the circulation of estrogen throughout the body. You see, the microbes in the estrobolum produce an enzyme known as beta-glucuronidase, which deconjugates estrogen into the active form. So beta-glucuronidase activity, in other words, is responsible for producing the active unbound form of estrogen that performs the physiological processes in the body that are dependent of estrogen. So when the gut is healthy and generally free of pathogens, that equibolum produces a normal amount of the beta-glucuronidose. However, when the gut is compromised, particularly if there is gut dysbiosis, an overgrowth of bacterial endotoxin, inflammation, or any dysfunctioning of the small intestine, then what can happen is there's an overproduction of the beta-glucuronidose, which can significantly increase the active form of estrogen in the body, its excretion and circulation throughout the body. So in fewer words, gut dysbiosis increases the overproduction of beta-glucuronidose, which can increase the activity and the circulation of estrogen in the body. So poor digestion can result in high estrogen levels. Not to mention, as I stated earlier, the intestines are also responsible for metabolizing and excreting estrogen throughout the body. So when they're not functioning properly, estrogen can build up further in the body and recirculate through the liver. And at the same time, the intestines are responsible for synthesizing other important hormones like thyroid hormone, which would regulate estrogen and keep it in check. So in a couple of different ways, poor digestion can lead to chronically high estrogen levels and getting back to the main part of this video can contribute to estrogen driven conditions like prostate disease. In fact, there's specific research on how gut dysbiosis can affect the prostate gland and is associated with prostate cancer. And as I share in just about every video that we make on prostate health, 
Estrogen has been known to directly affect the growth of the prostate and is known to contribute to prostate cancer. So at this point, you're probably wondering, what can I do to keep my digestion in good enough shape to make sure that these microbes in my intestine are producing the right amount of this enzyme so that way my estrogen levels are not chronically high and contributing to prostate disease? Well, there are numerous things that affect your digestion. As I go into detail in our perfect digestion course, stress is perhaps the number one cause of poor digestion. Stress shuts down the digestive system by activating the sympathetic nervous system or the fight or flight or stress metabolism, which directly shuts down the secretion of digestive juices. It slows up the motility and transit time of the food throughout the intestines and in every way possible shuts off the digestive process. Not to mention that stress also directly increases the levels of estrogen. So getting your stress levels in check is going to be imperative for proper digestive function. In addition to managing stress, there are very simple things that are known to directly interrupt the functioning of the intestines and lead to gut dysbiosis. For example, the use of contraceptive pills. So if you're a woman, you're taking birth control, this can not only negatively affect estrogen levels directly by being a synthetic estrogen, but it can actually throw off the microbiome. It can cause gut dysbiosis and further contribute to high levels of estrogen in that way. In addition to those things, some common culprits and contributing factors to poor digestion are obviously going to be eating foods that don't digest very well. Now this is more of a controversial topic. Some people suggest eating copious amounts of fiber where other people recommend avoiding consuming too much insoluble fiber because it can increase the activity of bacterial endotoxin in the gut and lead to gut issues in that way. So there's tons of controversy around what to eat and what not to eat for good digestion. So if you want to learn more about how to properly eat for good digestion, what is a truly easy to digest diet, then definitely be sure to check out our perfect digestion course, which goes into detail about that particular topic and so much more. You'll learn not only how to eat a easy to digest diet, one that is actually supportive of good digestive function, but you learn how to manage stress. You'll learn about various lifestyle factors that affect the functioning of the digestive system and so much more. So again, definitely check out that resource if you know or suspect that Poor digestion is a contributing factor to your health issues. And if you have elevated levels of estrogen or any known estrogen driven condition, you're definitely gonna to wanna to get a handle on any sort of digestive issues like chronic constipation, gas, diarrhea, bloating, etc. And just to leave you with a couple of very simple actionable tips right now for bringing down the overgrowth of pathogens in the small intestine, one thing I highly recommend for most people that have this or suspect this condition is the use of activated charcoal. Just 500 milligrams can actually help reduce the overgrowth of bacterial endotoxin in the gut. Also very simple things like a daily raw carrot has natural antimicrobial fibers and chemicals within the fiber of that carrot. So consuming something like a carrot on a daily basis is a great way to cleanse the intestines of any sort of pathogens that might be contributing to gut dysbiosis. And there are ultimately tons of things that can contribute to the overgrowth of pathogens in the small intestine. But some of the major contributing factors are going to be, of course, what you're eating. And unfortunately, a lot of foods that are promoted as health foods may actually be contributing factors to gut dysbiosis and gut issues. So again, if you want to learn more about what to actually eat for handling gut issues and correcting things like SIBO and gut inflammation, Again, check out the Perfect Digestion course to learn more. Otherwise, that brings this video to a close. If you found it enjoyable and helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And of course, if you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out our blog, our online tonic herb shop, and our online wellness academy, all which you can find in the description box below.